Viewer discretion is advised. There are some images in this report viewers may find disturbing. It's entirely possible that in just a few weeks from now, there will be no more Muslims in Bangui. It was in February that Peter Bocart of Human Rights Watch made this claim, and five months on, such is the case. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims have fled the Central African Republic, escaping violence perpetrated by the anti-Balaka militia. Violence projected towards them simply because they're Muslim. Gruesome images of brutality and torture surface the net, and harrowing words continue to come in abundance as Muslims flee the country. According to UNICEF, at least one child is maimed or killed in clashes every day in the landlocked country. In our special report looking at the crisis, we explore the stories of those fleeing their land, the support they're receiving, and take a look at the crisis in the Republic. More than 360,000 people have already fled from the Central African Republic to neighboring countries. Many fled at the beginning of this year when the crisis escalated into a cycle of what has been called war crimes and crimes against humanity, including ethnic cleansing. We live in Central Africa, a catastrophe humanitaire. There is a nettoyage ethno-religieux qui continue et qu'il faut arrêter. Il y a encore des gens qui sont tués, même ici et là, quelques massacres qui, qui, qui tiennent place. Il y a des gens qui sont encore forcés à se déplacer dans plusieurs endroits du pays. Il y a un grand nombre de réfugiés à l'extérieur du pays. Et il faut mobiliser la communauté internationale. Chad has been referred to as a lifeline for many of these refugees and has opened its doors to at least 100,000 fleeing the Central African Republic. The border between the two countries measures some 1,000 kilometers, and although the borders are now closed, recent updates from the United Nations Refugee Agency indicate that refugees from Car are still arriving at the Chadian border. Some have walked for close to two months to get there, and others are now traveling via Cameroon. Malnutrition, bullet wounds, dysentery, scabies and fatigue are just a few of the troubles faced by those arriving. The scarcity of aid and overall insecurity in refugee camps has prompted organizations to warn that those fleeing car could face a second humanitarian crisis inside Chad unless something is done quickly. We've arrived in Chad with NGO Muntada Aid, who have been working in the country for over 20 years. We're currently en route to the first camp we'll be visiting, situated in the capital. There are at least 4,000 people in the camps around me. This is the first of the camps we'll be visiting on our trip. All of these people have fled violence in the Central African Republic. Zulaika is here with her children, having fled car after her husband was killed, her husband, a former mayor. Zuleika isn't alone here in this camp, with many of the women here left widowed after their husbands were killed at the hands of the anti-Balaka. Ashta Bakar Asghar is an elderly resident at this camp and shows us burn marks from an anti-Balaka attack. She's been at this camp since January. Mm -hmm. 
أكمل الله لما أنا كودون العين في الجوامع كان قاعدين كمان هجوم أنا جاي الرجال كتنو والعيال أتامة وحدين ده تشوم بالنار يضبحوه يضبحوه ويشقوا البطن ويكملهم إصاص ويتشون شبتوهم يقطوهم يقطوهم يصبوهم يكوموهم مثل ده الزور قدامه ده يقطعوه ده كله في غشمة العبين كلها معردين اللي بعيالنا كلها كله كانوا بضبحونا بعيالنا كله بضبحونا العيال ده بتشتشون مقطوهم يا جيران معردين البيوت كسروا كل صبوان كي أسعى الصور حقا تدوه كل قاعدة كسروا فكان نقول بيأكلوا الناس تشم بيأكلوا الدم صبوا في القزاز الدم صبوا في القزاز بيشربوا Ashta fled here from the capital, Bangui, after losing members of her family and being attacked by the anti-Balaka militia. You sell the food and things that they give you for money. Many refugees living here often sell items they are given in order to lift themselves out of this impoverished situation. Most of these people had businesses back in the Central African Republic, which they left behind. Though there are many women residing here, they're not alone in their loss. Many men who have arrived at this camp have lost wives, children, and loved ones. Omar was a businessman in Kaa. He had a home, a career, and a family, all of which he has left behind, bar his two sons. How did it make you feel to leave the city? And can you tell me about what happened? After that happened, um, what did you do? بعد ذلك قمت بإكمال الإجراءات لزيسيس وشال أقدار بأن الشخص الذي همل هذه الأوراق وزحب إلى موقع زيسيس قتلوه في الطريق اللي هو جزيف كالي مينستر جزيف كالي. He now spends most of his time holding religious classes for people residing at the camp. This particular camp is for returnees, meaning people who are ethnically Chadian, but many more across the country host varying groups. Chadian authorities have said they will close this camp in December, asking the people staying here to relocate. Those that are residing here say they have nowhere else to go. The people here were flown in by Chadian authorities as violence towards Muslims by the anti-Balaka escalated in Kaa. The anti-Balaka, meaning anti-Machete, formed as a vigilante group made up of Christian militia, coming together to combat violence perpetrated by Seleka forces. The Seleka being a rebel military faction made up mostly of Muslims. They seized power in March 2013, but after increasing calls of violence being perpetrated by their hands, Jatodia, their leader, failed to control his group, leading to them becoming increasingly splintered. With international pressure looming, Jatodia and his Prime Minister, Nicolas Tenge, resigned in January as part of a deal negotiated in Chad. The current interim president, Catherine Samba Panza, assumed office straight away. Umar, who has been residing at this camp since January, told me about the change in dynamics and the upheaval of the anti-Balaka movement. <laughs> فلكن لدي بضع تنبيه أخرى إن شاء الله 
فعندما هم أرادوا أن يأملوا هذه الأمائل بعد يوم 5 12 هم بدأوا به وكان السنغاريس أتوا الفرنسيين هم الذين إذا زرميل الإنسان للمسلمين يأخذون أمتياتهم وأسلحتهم ويأمرون البلكة بقوض هذه المعارك ضد المسلمين في هذه الأحياء وعندما أتوا البولندي كانوا البولندي يتوا المسلمين ويأخذونهم يضعونهم في المساجد فعندما يذهبوا بهم إلى المساجد فهم يأتون لا أي شنو منازل المسلمين يحدمونها على الأرض كل بيوتنا حدمت The Seleka were disarmed at a time when the anti-Balaka were not thought to be the threat they turned out to be. The anti-Balaka soon made their intentions clear. They wanted all Muslims gone, indiscriminate of age or gender. Hundreds of Muslims were being killed in single mob attacks. On the 18th of February 2014, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon called on the United Nations Security Council to immediately deploy 3,000 troops to bolster the 6,000 African Union soldiers and 2,000 French troops already deployed in the country. They were being called to combat what he described as innocent civilians being deliberately targeted and murdered in large numbers. Many of those fleeing the Republic fled north to Chad, another landlocked country to the north of the Central African Republic. Home to over 200 different ethnic and linguistic groups and with a population of 12 million. Muslim Chadian politician Idris Devi has been president of Chad since 1990. After visiting the camp in the capital in Jemina, we're now driving 16 hours south to visit camps by the border. Behind me here are the borders of the Central African Republic. This is the closest we could get to. Over 100,000 people have crossed over into Chad seeking refuge from the violence that they've been faced with by the anti-Balaka in the Central African Republic. All of these people have crossed over to seek safety, but nobody is going back out. This border is guarded by 2,000 Chadian soldiers. For Muslims unable to escape, they have become targets of almost daily killings their bodies mutilated and dragged through the streets despite the presence of peacekeepers. Rights group Amnesty International has warned that the campaign of ethnic cleansing is causing a Muslim exodus. Muslims traditionally make up about 15% of Qa's 4.6 million population. There were at least 110,000 Muslims in the capital Bangui up until January, where there are now thought to be less than 1,000. Entire neighborhoods are now empty, with houses and businesses looted. According to Human Rights Watch, the anti-Balaka militia are increasingly organized and using language that suggests their intent is to eliminate Muslim residents. The United Nations have said that at least 2,000 people have already been killed. For those who have escaped here, they are thankful to the Chadian government for allowing them in. But reports of a lack of aid and vulnerability have led to NGOs and human rights organizations to worry about the state these refugees are being forced to live in. Working in Chad for over two decades, Montaza Aid were able to respond quickly to the sudden escalation of needs. But delivering aid in landlocked Africa is no easy feat. Acquiring the necessary documentation to enter into camps is both lengthy and difficult. Before flying out, one of the things pointed out to me by the World Food Programme were the difficult roads. Whilst travelling, we were told that if we didn't reach gravelled roads in time, we'd be stuck for two days. These are projects which take much planning and careful execution. Behind me here, the Muntada team are loading up parcels of sugar, rice and oil to take over to the refugee camp we'll be visiting. Saeed, can you tell us what 
tell me what's going on here. How is this food going to be distributed? Uh, well, we have to work with our partners here who've been establishing Chad for the last uh, 20 years. And we've just come to this uh, refugee camp where about 14,000 people have fled from a neighboring uh, car. And they fled scenes of violence, they fled scenes of uh, horror, and they've arrived here. And what we're doing is we're distributing uh, rice, uh, sugar, uh, oil, things that they're used to, things that they have, that they had when they were in uh, the Central African Republic, you know, the local products there. Um, and we're giving it to women and, and children. And so do you have to prioritize in terms of who you're giving the parcels too. How many parcels have you been able to fit onto the truck we've got here? Well, this is just one small part of, of the aid that we're distributing. Um, this week we're up to feed about 600 families, uh, inshallah. And they, I mean, the way that we choose, I mean, all of these people, to be honest, are in need. They're in dire need of food, they're in dire need of clean drinking water, they're in dire need of medical attention. And we're just trying to cover that and just alleviate their suffering. 16-year-old Mohammed Saleh fled to Chad with his mother and siblings. His father was stopped and taken aside whilst when you with say them. Suffering. Um, can you tell me a bit about what was happening? The Abani min dua sana. Sheke kan rasa, sheke kan rasa. Kana kangari na kul kula ras na ki. Bakana ni godu fuka kuna. Sheke na kan kagai kagai. Bakana ni godu fuka kuna naro. When you came here, your father was left behind. Um, can you tell me about his situation, why he's not here? Anina Gina, Gina Hini Jai, or Abuna Kula Riki Arabe Jai, and Nazdulu Asanis, Allah, Allah, Ki, Allah, Ziba, and Hini Jai. Said, we just heard um, Saleh's story. How did it make you feel hearing all of that? Um, he's one of the boys that just received one of those parcels um, from the truck you brought in. Uh, to be honest, absolutely shocking. Uh, Saleh, a 16-year-old boy, is just one of the many cases here in this camp. And no child should go through what he went through. And we've actually been told by some of the uh, workers here in this camp that Saleh has psychological issues. He has his feet, he's having nightmares at night. He can't sleep at night because of the horrific scenes that he has witnessed. There are a number of different camps in this region and the mass exodus of people fleeing is clear to be seen by the sheer velocity of numbers who have so recently arrived. This is a newly erected camp situated close to the border of Ka in the town of Maro. Those residing here have received nothing up until now. They don't need just food, they need shelter, they need uh, uh, clean drinking water, they need medicine, they need schooling for the children, and they need much, much more than that. One of the focuses within these camps is to ensure refugees have access to clean and functioning water wells. There are 19,000 people at this refugee camp, very close to the borders of the Central African Republic. Muntada Aid have just opened another water well. Well, it's essential that people get clean drinking water. If, they, if we don't supply them with clean drinking water, they'll be having water from the pools and the rivers, and especially so many people living in such close proximity. There are 19,000 people living here. There's a risk of a major outbreak or a major epidemic if we don't supply them with clean drinking water. So it is essential that they are, they, wells are dark. During our visit, we saw the opening of four new water wells one of which was at a seven-year-old camp with refugees from CAR who fled long before this recent escalation of violence. There are at least 25,000 people in the camps here. Most of these people are not Muslim. They arrived here from the Central African Republic at least seven years ago. Violence seen then is repeating itself now. The country has been notoriously unstable since gaining independence from France in 1960, with tribal violence rife in the country. Though communal violence of the nature witnessed now and the severity we're seeing is unprecedented. It is thought that there was some progress between 2008 and 2012, before the Seleka enforced coup and turn of events after that. We came down south to visit camps closest to the border with the Central African Republic and watch Muntada Aid open up their wells. We're now on a 13-hour drive back to the city where we started our journey. 
لنكونن من الشاكرين فلما أنجاهم إذا هم يبغون في الأرض بغير الحق Travelling down south, one of the things that became increasingly apparent was the tense nature of the military juxtaposed with the welcoming nature of general passers-by. Speaking to people in and outside of camps, the hospitable nature of Chadians and the patients embodied by refugees and returnees from the Central African Republic was explicit in the air around us. The psychological trauma of war could be seen in eyes grappled with fear and the fact that amongst everyone we spoke to, not a single person wanted to return to their homeland only served to highlight the dire situation currently faced in the country. Fearful of repercussions and wondrous of their fate, their psychology still to me seemed one of hope. Chad is an unstable country in itself and its current long-standing president, Idris Deby, only recently survived an attempted coup. He has been active in the affairs of his neighboring countries and played a vital role in allowing so many to cross over into Chad. The borders are now closed and there are still many left behind. Bangui and Poco International Airport, the Central African Republic's only international airport, is filled to the brim with families who have fled their homes. They're trying to find safe haven, but they're still left right at the heart of the crisis. There is no other way out other than to face month-long walks or truck-driven routes so often impeded by those they're running from. Inside Chad, calls by NGOs of another crisis for those escaping violence cannot be taken lightly. Without adequate food and water and functioning development programs, generations will have been lost to the violence they've escaped from. The country must now deal with its influx of refugees, but it is a task they cannot do alone. There are currently 50 million people displaced globally, and it is with them our hearts should lie.